Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video for you today. I have a video about what is money and how do you buy things currency in prison. People have been asking me the different ways things are done. Well, before I get started, everybody, let's check me out. All the member programs, YouTube, Patreon, all of the different services, please check us out. If you have not hit that subscribe button, please do that. Check it out. I have friends tell me, oh, I forgot to hit that subscribe button. Anyway, check my merchandise out too, please. Uh, we're doing a lot of good things. So, I wanted to get this uh, uh, video done because people have been asking me, Larry, how does it actually work? How does prison money work? Now, you know, when I first went into prison, I went to prison in 1996. And in 1996, they were just getting off the yards in federal prison, actual money. They used to have coins. People would hoard coins and you're not supposed to have so over a certain amount of money. Then they gave what they call an amnesty to get all the coins off the yard. This is coins, actual money. In today's world, there's zero money in the prison system. How the prison system works with money. There's a number of ways, but we're gonna go over every one of them. Okay, first of all, in prison, you have a card. It's, a, it's, it's I wanna say it looks like a credit card, but it is an ID card. We'll put a picture up right here. Now, that ID card, as you can see, 5222404, has a strip on the back, just like any other card. It is a, uh, and it tells all the information about Larry Lawton. Also, it has my, what they call, my commissary account. Whatever money is sent to me in prison, I can use that money to buy stuff off the commissary or put money on my phone. You know, in prison, in the federal system, they say the people call collect. You can't call somebody collect in federal prison. You have to have the money on your account. You then take the money from your account and you put it on the phone. Now, in the system, it's about $3.75 for a 15 minute call. So that's what happens there. Now what happens is you have X amount of dollars. Now you could have as much money as you want in your account. In fact, one of the guys who got caught stealing from Unicor, which is the prison industries, he literally had a $30,000 check sent to his commissary account or prison account number. Now that has to be done through certain only ways you can do it. You had to send it to a specific location and it used to be where you could send money, any money order to the system and they would process it and then your money would be put on the books. They don't do that anymore. It's all done from one centrally located place. And here's the problem. Everybody takes a piece of your action. So if you're, you're a uh, family and you're trying to just struggle to help your, your son or daughter out in prison, what happens is they're taking a piece of that action. So it's kind of really hurts the families that try to help people, which kind of gets me a little bit pissed. But moving on, how the money actually works. So your money gets put on the books, they call it. And now, you know, you can look up in a number. You get a phone number in prison. So what will happen is you hit the phone number and you can call and see how much money is on your account before you go to commissary or before you try to put money on the phone. And you know, it was funny because everybody had to know what everybody had. Because if a guy owes me money in prison and I tell him I want you to go to the store. Oh yeah, I got the money, Lawton. I got the money, Lawton. And he doesn't have the money. Then I'm, we're going to have a problem. So the first thing I would do is I would look on his account. And I could look on his account by making a phone call on his account. He'll make the call, give me the phone, and he'll say, you have $290. Well, in the Federal Bureau of Prisons, you're allowed to spend 200, it might've went up, but $270 a month on your commissary account. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you go to the commissary and you spend $80, now you have $190 to spend. Now, you have to keep an eye on this because you, you need stuff in prison. You know, people often ask me, Larry, what should I do with my uh, loved one? They're asking for money. That's normal. People need money. You want to live a, live, live a decent life, so to speak. Now, also what happens is you borrow money from somebody. You borrow something from somebody. You get a screw book or you do some, as I used to say fuck book, but get a, get a, get a, get a porno magazine to use. That, you rent that. You want to get a cell cleaner. You own $5 a week. He might ask you to get five thousand commissary or a book of stamps. So as I keep going forward, money works is a number of ways. Now I have X amount of dollars on my commissary account. I am working in a law library, and a guy says I charge him fifty dollars to do a brief or whatever it is or to look over something. 
Usually you tell the person, I just give me uh, $50 in tuna. I used to be a big tuna fish eater and uh, peanut butter, things that were high in protein. So I would just tell him, get me, you know, if there were a dollar a can and he, and he could only afford it, he goes, I can't, you know, I, I got the money, here it is, but I'm only allowed to spend 270 a week, a month. You know, you don't want to kill the guy and get all his money so he can't eat. So you say, okay, give me, uh, you know, 10 cans of mackerel or 10 cans of tuna, and that's a dollar 40 a can, dollar 50 a can. So, you know, you can do that and get $15 worth of stuff from him. So you don't kill him on letting him not eat. Now, also in prison, they have what they call store man. Now that store man is just like anybody else. He does the same thing. It's its economy in its own self. So now that store man is gonna give you two ramen noodle soups and you gotta give him three back. That's the usual exchange rate for candy bars. You might buy two Snicker bars, you gotta give him three Snicker bars back. And believe me, you need that in prison. There's, a, there's usually multiple store men in every unit, and those guys will have a locker full of stuff. Now, is it technically illegal to do that? Yes, the prison system knows what's going on. They don't give a fuck, for the most part. Because that guy who's getting all that commissary, he keeps building up his commissary, and before you know it, he's making a good little hustle in prison. And he's building up stamps, and those stamps can get money. Now here's what also happens. I get phone calls from a parent saying, Larry, I think something's going wrong. My uh, son or daughter is asking for me to send $200 to this guy's address. What do I do? Do I do that? Well, let me, let me explain how that works as well. There's a lot of drugs in prison. A lot of times a young kid will get hooked on drugs. And then how does he pay the drug dealer? He pays the drug dealer by giving them what they call street to street money. So the drug dealer will say, hey listen, you want, you want heroin? Prison heroin was $25 a paper. A hit of acid was $25. Marijuana comes in caps, they call it. And it's a chapstick cap full of marijuana is $10. A cap, a cap of weed was maybe, uh, you're lucky you can give, get it, you're half a joint out of it. You know, it's a very thin little thing. But those are drugs that are, alcohol used to call, cost $5 for a neck or a quart, a little quart of, a, or a cup. They used to sell those Coffee Mate cups, the red and white Coffee Mate Nefty cap, they cups. One full cup is a neck of wine. That wine would cost you $5. Automatic five dollars. So now you have the wine, you have whatever it is, but now you're building up a bill to somebody to owe somebody money. So what do you do there? Well, you got to send him the money somehow. Now here's the problem: if you have a loved one who keeps, you know, asking you for more and more money, there's an issue there because you're you're now involved in his drug addiction because he might be hooked on heroin in there, and he's going to do whatever he can and beg and tell everybody that he can get that money. Here is the problem with that money. It will never end. And here's another problem with that money. That young man who's, who's doing the drugs has nowhere to go but to do that. And he's gonna do that by promising something he can't afford. Here's what happens after that. He ends up going to the hole and now he's gonna write a letter or he's gonna make a phone call saying, mom, I need this money, I need $400, I need something, and if I don't get it, they're gonna stab me. They're gonna do something. Well, I, is he playing with you? You don't want your kid to get stabbed. You don't want a loved one to get stabbed. But you also don't want that loved one to, to keep screwing over your you know money. All you're doing at this point is you're supporting your, drug, your, your, your son or daughter's drug habit. Literally, you're supporting his drug habit. Now, that has to stop. I don't care what it is. You have to tell that son or daughter in the nicest of ways, I'm gonna send you X amount of dollars to your account every month and that is it, period. He will handle it. He will go to the hole. He will get clean in some way or another. He will get maybe transferred. You're not gonna stop it and you're not gonna buy your loved one's way out of trouble in prison. You can't. You can't call the prison and say, my son's a drug addict, I want him to stop drugs. Whoever's selling him drugs should go, you know, be in trouble. That would be the death of your son. Your son is a man who's in a prison and, and it's a tough place, but he has to learn one way or the other how to handle himself in prison. So how do you do it? Sadly, he has to figure out how to stop drugs, hang around the right crowd, pay his debt off, whatever it is. And I watched many people do it, get off it. You know, the, listen, 
like anything else, any drug dealer, anybody, what do they want? They want their money. They want to get whatever money is owed to them, and, and that's it, because they're making a hustle. Uh, they're not gonna force you to do it if you don't have the money. Most of the drug dealers in prison are drug, druggies themselves, and they get it in there, and they uh, do it, and they make enough money to support their own habits. It's like anything else, but there are a few in there who are literally drug dealers in prison. The network of getting the drugs is very easy, whether it's through the police, whether it's through some other place, the visiting room, the mail room. There are a number of ways drugs comes into prison. I'm not gonna get into that. We are talking about how money works in prison. So now, there's other ways you can get money. I would come to a prison yard. Now, I used prison money, which is, at this point, it, when I first went in, it was cigarettes. You'd hear that, oh, or a carton of cigarettes, a pack of cigarettes, or whatever it was. Even single cigarettes. But that's no more in the system. What is used in the system is books of stamps. Now, when I was in a book of stamp, a, a, a regular stamp was about 32 cents. But in prison, for commerce-wise, that one stamp is 25 cents. So if you had a book of stamps, which is a normal book of stamps you buy off the commissary, it's $5, period. Even though the book costs you 32 cents a stamp and it costs you $6.80, whatever it was at that point, you are getting $5 for that book of stamps. So somebody like me who knows the system, the first thing I did was I would go to the yard, I know some people, I would get a guy, oh, who's the guy with the stamps? I'd say, who sells stamps? They'd say, oh, he's the bookie over there, he's the deal over there. Now, when I was in Jessup, Georgia, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to Massey. When I was in Jessup, Georgia, I had a, a, a thousand books of stamps, technically worth about $5,000 but I had a thousand books of stamps. Now you gotta remember this too, if you get caught with those stamps, they will confiscate all those stamps. They will confiscate your money. So you used to put it all over the place. You'd hide it everywhere. You'd put it in different places in the prison. You'd have friends hold stamps. Usually, you know, you're allowed to have three books of stamps in your possession at any time. Obviously, if they were cut up like bookmaking, because they literally get put cut up like little squares and you take the 20 stamps, put them together, and it's a little, little square, and it's easy to hide that way. Obviously, stamps are used. I mean, when you work in a legal library, and you have to mail stuff out legally, and you have to mail it, uh, you know, return receipt requested, all the stuff, and it costs money, the first thing you do is you get good stamps. Well, there are guys who would sell actually good stamps. I mean, that was normal. I mean, all the time it happened. We, the people, would buy a stamp to five dollars, they're worth six eighty or whatever it was, and you're saving money right there. The guys who are seasoned professionals in prison, professionals, seasoned people, convicts, are not buying stamps off the commissary. Even if you bought one stamp off the commissary, I get that. One book of stamps, two books of stamps. Sometimes I would buy all three books just to have the stamps. And now you don't know, gotta remember if you're gonna go to get some kitchen item, you used to buy a, a, a apple or an orange or a uh, something off the a tomato, tomatoes are common. And they were st one stamp and then they went to two stamps. So two stamps, it was 50 cents for a tomato. You know, you buy in a tomato, you want a tomato sandwich, you could buy a loaf of bread, you could buy four pieces of bread. You could break it down in, any, in a lot of number of ways in prison. So that's how money works. Now, I, Larry Lawton, would never buy him at full face value. Very, very, very rare. Of course. When you know how to talk to people and you know who to go to, your stamps are going to be uh, at a lot, lot better price. And you go to the guy who's got five thousand, uh, a thousand books of stamps like me. Well, I'm looking to get rid of some of them to get money to my account. So if you come on the yard, the bookies and the big people have a lot of stamps. They use it for gambling mostly. Like uh, guys would put a couple stamps on a ticket or a, a book of stamps on a ticket. Bet three games, hit the game and have to pay that or get paid five books of stamps in return, of course. So when he did that, we had the books, but we kept building up so many books, we had to get rid of them. So how do you get rid of them? You go to a guy like me, Larry, and they, hey, look, you're looking for stamps? Yeah. Send me $100 to my books and I'll send you 25 books of stamps. Hear that? 25 books of stamps for $100. So you're not only getting five books of stamps for free, Five books of stamps for free. Now you can do that enough and you can even sell a couple of books and get some money back if you want. But you don't do that. I would never do that. I use them. 
I pay my, my cell cleaner, I pay the guy who's getting me stuff out of the kitchen, I pay the laundry person. Somebody like myself had enough money that I could do that. Now if you don't have enough money, you gotta hustle it yourself, or you gotta do the laundry for other people and they'll pay you. That's how that works. You could clean people's cells for a hustle. You can book make for a hustle. You can get sugar out of the kitchen for a hustle. There's a number of hustles. You could be a transporter of stuff from the kitchen back to the unit as a hustle. There's so many hustles in prison that if, if you're not lazy, you will make money. And when, since you're making money, you can now spend money on different things. Now, when you go to the store man in prison, I want a Snicker bar. He says three stamps or four stamps. Give him four stamps. That's a Snicker bar. You already got the stamps. I mean, think about though, you, you get a hundred extra stamps if you're buying by the bulk. I've never been to a prison where you couldn't buy X amount of stamps for, uh, and get a deal. They call it street to street money. So I am saying, I am having my people send a hundred dollars to his people, or you can even have your people send it to him into his account. Now they try to stop a lot of this by uh, having only certain people who are on your account able to send you money to your account. So you, you'd have to, I'd have to be on your phone list, let's say, to send you money. Now again, wherever there's prisoners and, uh, and hustles, there's gonna be a workaround. And there was a workaround to that, no question about it. We used to uh, get somebody and you know the guy is the bookie and you'd get on his, you'd have one of your family members get on his list. Now, it, even that sometimes can get problematic because in the prison system, you can only have 20 people on your phone list, 20. So now you wanna add someone, you gotta drop somebody. And they don't do it immediately, it might take a few days. Has to go to your counsel, your counsel puts it into IT, IT sets the system up and you're good. But it's not like you just can go in there and change the number and put it on. That doesn't work like that. So the system is set up for one, for you to only spend $270 in the commissary per month. Now they figure that's enough for you to buy your, uh, that did not count stamps, let me put it that way. They would never stop you from buying stamps and that wouldn't come off of your, uh, your total to spend. Sometimes they'd have sneakers on there and that wouldn't come off your total to end. Because they realize buying a new pair of sneakers, it's $100, you know, you don't have enough food or whatever it is uh, to uh, use. Now, they use the commissary account and they use everything else as a tool. Hear me out. If you're a fuck up, they might say, okay, well, we're gonna take your commissary away for six months. I can't go to commissary. Again, I could buy stamps, can't refuse you buying stamps, because then, you know, if you're doing something legal, they're refusing you a way to get into the courts. Can't do that. Even when they took my commissary away for fighting or whatever it is, that's a get around, easy. I get a guy who I know doesn't go to the commissary a lot. I tell him, hey, listen, I know you don't go to the commissary a lot, I need your $200 of your spending money. He said, okay. You send him $270. That's his commissary list amount for that month. He's gonna spend 70 on himself. You don't care. But Larry Lawton now has $200 to go to the commissary. And that's very important because everything is needed in prison like anywhere else. Socks, you need uh, toothpaste, toothbrush. Now you can have it, the state can give you that. They call it state zone. It's garbage. But if you wanna eat peanut butter, tuna, mackerel, and uh, uh, ramen noodle soup, all that stuff costs money. So money works in that way of, you can have it legit, it's called, this, the, that's called straight to your books money, or you can have street to street money, and then you get the equivalent of a dollar bill. It's the currency in prison. So I hope I explain how money works in prison, and I think it's important. If you like these videos, please hit that subscribe button, pass them on, uh, and comment. I love comments and I read comments. You guys have a great day. Please stay safe. Stay tuned for Monday's episode of the 100th episode of the Real Deal Podcast. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Have a great day, everybody. Stay strong.